Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch. Today we're going to use the advanced method for tangent graphs to graph a shifted tangent graph. y equals negative 2 tangent of 1 half x minus pi over 2 plus 1. So here's our method template and our equation and grid. And before we get started, let's write out the general form of a shifted tangent equation. y equals a tangent bx minus c plus d. And note that our b term has been factored out in this equation. We see that 1 half times x minus pi over 2. So really what we have here is bx minus c over b. And that's a, a really good thing. We can very clearly see the phase shift by just simply looking at the equation. We can see that it will be pi over 2. So that's a nice perk to having the b term already factored out. All right, so let's jump in. Step one, we'll find our essentials starting first with our base graph information. So we see a is our coefficient in front of tangent, so that's negative two. And so that's going to help us with those curve shaping points. So what happens between an x-intercept and an asymptote. And it'll be vertically stretched out by a factor of two. And then that negative tells us it will be vertically reflected from the original graph of y equals tangent x. So I like to go ahead and make a little star here that just notes, hey, this is going to be flipped from the parent graph. It's just a nice thing to make note of. Okay, second, we have b. We see b is the coefficient in front of x, so that's 1 half. That tells us we will have half a cycle of tangent between 0 and pi for this graph, and it also helps us find our period. For tangent, we calculate that by pi over b. So we have pi divided by 1 half. Okay, so that's like times 2. So our period is going to be 2 pi. And that's just the length of one horizontal cycle. Okay, so now that we have the period, we can go ahead and choose how to label our axes. You could do this using any label you wanted, but with the three steps to sketch method, I like to be really particular for the horizontal scale. Take the period and divide it by four, and that'll ensure that your base pattern in the next step will align nicely with your horizontal tick marks. So we have two pi divided by four, that ends up reducing to pi over two. So that's how we'll label our horizontal tick marks. And for our vertical scale, one usually works well. So let's take a moment and label our axes. So we'll count by pi over 2, that's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 reduces to 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2 reduces to 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, and 8 pi over 2 reduces to 4 pi. All right, so if you're following along, I'm going to pause and label the negative part of my horizontal axis. So go ahead and take some time to do the same. Okay, so here's what the negative side of the axis looks like. All the same values, just negative. And we can label our vertical axis counting by ones. So easy enough, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. All right, so now we've got everything we'll need for step two. Let's go ahead and look at our shifts since we're still analyzing our equation in step one. And this will help us with step, step three. We'll take care of the shifts there. So C over B, like we talked about, is already showing in our equation. We see X minus C over B in the general form, and our equation is X minus pi over 2. So thus, C over B must be pi over 2. Okay, and if you want to make a, a note for yourself, that's moving right. Okay, but positive pi over 2. All right, and then we see D is that last number of the equation, that plus 1. D is 1 which means we'll be shifting our graph up one unit. All right, last thing for step one, let's go ahead and find the equation for the asymptotes. And so there's a really simple way to find this asymptotes equation. And it's great because you can substitute in values for a variable, we'll call it K, and it will generate every single asymptote for your graph without having to list them all out, which would be impossible. So all you have to do is take the inputs of your tangent function, which are all of your horizontal transformations, and set them equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. And those are the 
parent asymptotes of y equals tangent x. So here we go, we'll do a little scratch work. We have 1 half x minus pi over 2, the inputs of the tangent function for our equation, and set them equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. Now k is just that integer that we talked about, and you can substitute in negative 1, 0, 1, whatever you need, and it'll get you a different asymptote along the graph. So now that we have this, we simply want to solve for x. So the first thing we should do is divide both sides of the equation by 1 half, or even easier, let's multiply both sides by 2. All right, so that gets rid of the 1 half on the left side. Let's times 2, make sure that's not confusing. So we're left with x minus pi over 2 equal to pi over 2 times 2 is just pi, and pi k times 2 is 2 pi k. All right, and then last but not least, we just need to add pi over 2 to both sides. So we get x equals pi plus pi over 2. So if you need to write a common denominator there, you can. So 2 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2, that's 3 pi over 2. And then the 2 pi k stays as is because it is not a like term with pi over 2 or, of course, pi. All right, so you can go ahead and put this in place for the asymptotes equation. And while we're doing that, note that if you let k equal 0, you would get an asymptote at 3 pi over 2. If you let k equal 1, you'd be adding together 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi. So you should have another asymptote at 7 pi over 2. Okay, you could let k be negative 1. When you substitute all that and simplify, you should see that you'd have an asymptote at x equals negative pi over 2. Um, so that's just a really great way to generate the asymptotes. Um, and it also will help you double check your graph at the end. Okay, so now we've done the hard part. We've done all the analysis. We've got everything organized. We're ready for step two where we'll plot the base pattern. And that star helps us remember that it's going to be reflected from the original um, tangent graph, y equals tan x. And remember when we're doing this, we want to do it lightly because this is not our final graph, what we're about to do. Um, it is an intermediate and will shift in the next step. Okay, so the tangent base pattern is going to be zero or x-intercept, curve shaping point, asymptote, and another curve shaping point. So we know that that starts at the origin. Do this lightly. I'm going to do this in a light blue. So we'll start at the origin. We know that our next point, our curve shaping point, will happen at our first horizontally labeled tick mark, pi over 2. And the y coordinate is simply going to be the value of a, so negative 2. And you can already see part of that tangent curve forming, if you're familiar with the tangent graph. Um, and you notice that this will be reflected from y equals tan x. Okay, then we have at the next horizontal tick mark, our asymptote. So I'll sketch that lightly. And finally, we'll have a curve shaping point at our third horizontal tick mark. And this time, the y coordinate will be the opposite value of a, so positive 2. All right, let's go ahead and mark our next x-intercept, which would be the start of another cycle. Um, that'll just help us as we're sketching our final graph. And that's really all we have in step 2. So we have a lightly graphed base pattern. And now we're ready for step 3, where we will shift, sketch, and repeat. So we are going to be able to switch to our final color. I'll use green. Um, you can mark darkly if you're choosing that. Um, and all we have to do is apply our shifts to these intermediate light blue points. So for each point, at the same time, we'll move right pi over 2, so that's one grid unit horizontally, and up 1, and that's also one unit vertically. All right, so starting with our point at the origin, move right pi over 2 and up 1. Okay, our curve shaping point that was at pi over 2, negative 2, we'll shift it right and up. So now it's at pi comma negative 1. Our asymptote, of course, moving it right pi over 2 affects it. Moving it up 1 doesn't change its location. Okay, so we have that asymptote, and that's at 3 pi over 2. So that should connect with what we said earlier when we were talking about the asymptotes equation. We expected an asymptote here for our final graph, and here it is. All right, our curve shaping point that was at 3 pi over 2, comma 2 is now moving right pi over 2, up 1. 
So it's at 2 pi comma 3. And then that last point that kind of closes out this cycle at 2 pi, we'll move it right pi over 2 and up 1. Okay, so now we're ready to sketch in, and I'm going to take a second to erase the light blue. And if you marked lightly, you might want to just erase or make sure that it's very clear where your final graph is to avoid confusion. Okay, so erasing those intermediate marks, and we're ready to sketch our tangent curve, our vertically reflected tangent curve. So we sketch it in just like this. All right, so you can see what were once x-intercepts are now up on the line y equals 1. We did shift up 1, um, and now we can repeat. So I'll show the repeat the additional cycles in purple. And we're just going to repeat this pattern over and over again. So we already have what was an x-intercept. Okay, we have a curve shaping point, another asymptote, and this one we did predict according to our asymptotes equation. It's at 7 pi over 2. And then we have another curve shaping point. So you're just taking this pattern and stamping it over again, basically. And we'll sketch it in. Okay, and of course, it'll continue like that. And let's go some in the negative direction. So we have working from what was an x-intercept. Then we have our curve shaping point, which will be on the y-axis at 3. Then we have our asymptote, which we predicted when we plugged in k equaled negative 1. We got an asymptote at negative pi over 2. So we should feel very confident that our graph is coming together nicely. So let's flesh out this pattern a little bit more. So curve shaping point, original x-intercept, another curve shaping point, another asymptote. So hopefully you're thinking, well, I bet I would get this asymptote if I plugged in negative 2 for k. All right, working backward just a little bit more, repeating the pattern over and over again. And so we can sketch in this tangent curve several more cycles so we have a really nice graph for this equation and there you have it so a couple things just for emphasis we said that our asymptotes happened here when k was zero here when k is one so you would get if you let k be two you get the next one to the right which would go off of our grid we had k equal to negative one k equal to negative 2. So hopefully that helps you really understand better how the asymptotes equation works to generate your asymptotes for your graph. Um, you can also double check that you have the right amount of tangent happening according to your b term. We said that half a cycle of tangent should happen between 0 and pi. So let's look between 0 and pi we have here. And that's kind of a weird half, but indeed that is half of a cycle. Um, so it's neat to see all our pieces fit together well, everything is consistent, so we should feel really confident that we have an accurate and correct graph for our equation. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you feel a lot more confident in using this method to graph tangent equations that are shifted. I'll post some links in the video description for more examples and some for using this method with other trig functions. Uh, thanks again for watching. Have a great day.